Runways, taxiways, and ramp areas at any airport are dangerous places. With several teams of personnel performing multiple tasks related to the servicing and turnaround of aircraft. Factors such as weather, noise, congestion, flight schedules, security issues, and individual attentiveness all contribute to a frenetic environment in which a small mistake could escalate into a serious incident, a runway incursion, a vehicle-related collision, or personal injury. The International Civil Aviation Organization's definition of a runway incursion is any occurrence at an aerodrome involving the incorrect presence of an aircraft, vehicle, or person on the protected area of a surface designated for the landing and takeoff of aircraft. Runway incursions are classified into four categories, ranging from the presence of a person, vehicle, or aircraft located in the runway protected area to the most serious, a near collision. Incidents also involve vehicle-to-aircraft collisions, mishandling aircraft movement operations, and personal and potential passenger injury due to lack of education and or situational awareness. The best approach to ensure a safe and efficient tug and tow operation is to adopt a risk-free operations environment. As with all of The purpose of airport runway, taxiway, and ramp markings, signs, and lights is simple to provide a standardized and simplified surface navigation system to affect safe ground movement operations, with the goal being to reduce runway incursions. Markings, signs, and lights provide three critical clues for safe ground movement, your destination, your route, and any movement restrictions you will encounter. Boundary signs are used to identify the boundary of the runway safety area and the ILS critical area. These signs are visible when exiting these areas and are posted on the reverse side of mandatory hold position signs. The runway boundary sign faces the runway and is visible upon exiting the runway. It is located next to the yellow holding position marker. It provides a visual cue that the aircraft is clear of the runway when exiting the runway. The ILS critical area boundary sign is located next Proper, concise, and clear communications are essential to a tug and tow operation that is safe, efficient, and error-free. When in the act of towing or moving an aircraft, it is absolutely critical to get it right. Deviating from standard operating procedures, committing unintentional errors, or hurrying through procedures or cutting corners can lead to potentially life-threatening situations. In this section, we will examine the common communications protocols you can expect during operations within a non-movement area or operations involving towing an aircraft to a taxi lane and within a movement area. Let's first examine a communications example taking place in a non-movement area. In this case, a standard pushback from a gate. Remember that as a tug operator, communication with air traffic control may be second-hand information relayed by the pilot or whoever is positioned in the cockpit, such as a mechanic or another tug operator. However, if equipped with a communications radio, the tug will have direct contact with air traffic control. Once a tug plugs into the aircraft, communication is established. When all aircraft turnaround operations are complete, the outer safety perimeter envelope is clear and the aircraft is ready for pushback, the pilot will advise air traffic control of their intention to push back. Ground, Southwest 234, ready for pushback. Air traffic control will respond to the pilot or alert the pilot to a potential conflict, such as another aircraft pushing back or an incoming aircraft. So it's 234, Rio ground, push back, your expression advisory taxi. The pilot relays this instruction to the tug operator, who begins the pushback. There are numerous hazards in the ramp area associated with the aircraft. Always wait until the aircraft's engines have been shut down before beginning any tow connection or movement around the aircraft. There are ingestion zones painted in the ramp area, and they are there for good reason. If you must move around the aircraft while turbine engines are at idle, respect these zones. Even at idle, FOD, or foreign object debris, 
and personnel can be sucked into the engines. The blast zone is the area directly behind and to the side of a turbine engine. The high velocity and heat generated by the engine's exhaust are extremely dangerous. For propeller-driven engines, the safety zones are equally important. A propeller is roughly two and a half times larger than the engine diameter, creating a larger danger zone. Rotating propellers are virtually invisible to the human eye. Unfortunately, far too many seasoned personnel have inadvertently walked into running propellers. Towing speed is a major consideration affecting the tug's handling characteristics and braking distance. Pushback towing speed should not exceed that of the walking team members, generally about three to five miles per hour. All tug and aircraft combinations will have maximum allowable safe speeds, as determined by the aircraft's weight and the tug's power rating. Weather conditions will also determine safe towing speeds. TLTV operators will have published top speeds for various aircraft and conditions, and they should not be exceeded. Heavier aircraft will greatly affect momentum and braking distance. A tow operation that is moving too fast can have disastrous consequences if the braking distance exceeds safety limits. Sudden braking in a fast-moving TLTV towing a heavy aircraft has caused violent oscillations in the TLTV movement, which has led to severe personal injury. There is also a pivot limit on tugs, the maximum angle of turn radius allowable to prevent damage and maintain safe handling. You should be aware of these limits, which vary between types of tugs and aircraft. During the course of developing this program, we interviewed a variety of sources. Ground ops managers, tug drivers, control tower managers, and training experts. One theme emerged. The vast majority of tow operation safety infractions are avoidable and are caused by human factors. These factors include a lack of situational awareness, lack of knowledge of and adhering to proper communications protocols, and a sense of complacency about procedures and duties. Situational awareness is a continuous perception and evaluation of yourself and your duty in relation to the dynamic environment around you. Your ability to anticipate problems and act on decisions to avoid those problems requires a high level of attentiveness and awareness. Achieving and maintaining a high level of situational awareness involves being familiar with your airport, its layout, movement and non-movement areas, hold positions and construction activities, the use and meaning of all markings, signs and lights, expertly knowing your job and the equipment you use through constant training, being attentive to your surroundings and team, staying on task not deviating from standard operating procedures and creating a risk-free environment regarding mistakes and errors. Comprehensive understanding of and a strict adherence to communications is essential to maintaining a safe and professional environment. This includes keeping in constant contact with your team during tow operations, both visually and orally, knowing how and when to communicate properly with air traffic control, and knowing the ABCs of communications, accuracy, brevity, and clarity. Eliminate any sense of complacency or being too comfortable in the assumption that bad things won't happen. This includes never assuming you have clearance or permission to proceed with a task or movement, never assuming everyone else knows what they're doing, anticipating the unexpected, Maintaining a professional attitude about your job, even if your team members are your close friends. And never cutting corners, committing unintentional errors, or compromising time for the sake of getting the job done quicker. Never rush. Take the time to do it right. By following the best practices presented in this program, and by professionally demonstrating the skills learned in your employer's training programs, any tow operation can be a safe, efficient, and successful mission.